All right, so I'm going to talk about the feature and look at the matters most to us. It's the data modeling feature that both the previous speakers have talked about in, uh, in some detail. Our perspective is a little bit different, and I think it's a little bit different because we've actually got to implement a combination of Snowplow and Looker across a host of different companies in kind of different industries. And so I've had a chance to, uh, to think about actually modeling event data in general. Uh, so very quickly, I'm going to cover what is Snowplow, <laughs> Uh, why Snowplow and Looker play so nicely together, and then dive into actually why LookML is so important when you're dealing with event level data. Um, so just, to, just by way of introduction, Snowplow is an event analytics platform. Uh, we built Snowplow because we wanted to make it as easy as possible for companies that wanted to record events across their business. That's events on their website, events on their mobile app, events from their server side systems, events in their call center, events in their store. Um, Snowplow is a platform that lets them capture data that describes all those events across all those different channels, and it pumps those events into a unified log, a centralized location um, that then enables those companies to do anything that they want with that data. Um, because event data is some of the richest data that any kind of company um, ends up collecting. So what Snowplow ends up being is it ends up being this uh, data pipeline um, and for some of our users, billions of events a day are being pumped down this data pipeline. Um, just to run you through the data pipeline very, very quickly, uh, data is generated either in trackers, the kind of JavaScript trackers, like uh, in a similar way to Google Analytics or Adobe Analytics, um, but also mobile trackers, iOS, Android, server-side trackers. And uh, recently, we launched the capabilities that you could stream event data from third-party systems uh, that support webhooks. So you can stream data in from your instant messaging app if you're using OLARC, from your call center via call rail, uh, from your email marketing system via SendGrid or MailChimp, or uh, from your advertising service provider. All that data ends up being streamed into your Snowplow data pipeline. We then take that data, we enrich it, and we load it into a data warehouse. And from there, really, the world's your oyster. Um, what we find our users wanting to do is then model the data in the data warehouse and perform analytics on it. And it's, that, it's for those two parts of the pipeline that Looker really shines. Um, so for very many of our users, we really feel like we're selling them this combined solution. We're selling them this whole data pipeline with Snowplow on the left-hand side and Looker on the right. Um, what does Looker do on top of Snowplow data? Well, in a nutshell, it does this. It takes that very, very detailed, very, very granular, one line of data for every single event um, that you can access via SQL, and it turns it into something that anyone can access. Um, but actually, let's dive in in a bit more detail. What's going on in that event, uh, in that event data modeling step um, that we, that, uh, that, that's so interesting? And why is that step so hard to perform if you don't have a tool like Looker? If we can understand the value in that step, then you'll, we can really understand why we're so keen um, about Looker at Snowplow. So what happens in that step actually looks very, very different across our different users. But there are certain phases in that event data modeling that are, that are pretty consistent. And it's worth, before we dive into this in more detail, thinking about how this looks different to the case where a company's analyzing event level data, but they have perhaps only one, two, or three different types of events. Um, so for analysts who are from a kind of a customer services background and are used to dealing with, for example, transactions data, if you've worked with Tesco club card data or something similar, you're dealing fundamentally with one event type, which is a transaction. And aggregating over that transaction is incredibly easy. Segmenting audience is incredibly easy. Um, pivoting on that data is incredibly easy. If you're a Snowplow data user, and you're collecting 50, 100 different types of events. You're tracking page view events, page ping events. You're tracking application open events, different events in a mobile game. Uh, you're tracking events in your call center, events on your server side systems. All those different types of events, trying to model that data is actually incredibly difficult. And the first step that nearly all our users take is what we call identity stitching. Identity stitching is the process of looking at your event stream, this line of events on the left, 
and figuring out that a handful of these events are actually all being performed for the same user. Um, and this, in a web world and in a multi-channel world, isn't a straightforward thing to do. We find that different users adopt different identity stitching algorithms and different approaches, um, not just to stitch uh, user behaviors across different browsers and devices, but even within, um, within the browser. So when we're doing identity stitching, we're identifying all the events that belong to the user, and then we're aggregating all across all those events to generate a single record for that user. And it's, as part of this step, we're also doing behavioral segmentation um, often, and generally joining this user behavior with other customer data sets like CRM. Another step in the event data modeling process is taking micro events and aggregating them up to macro events. Um, so a good example is if you're a video site, a user might engage with a particular video in a particular session, and that engagement might be captured across 50 different events. Um, in the example here, they might view a listing of the video, they might then view the synopsis for the video, they might play the video, pause the video, play the video again, reach the end of the video, watch an ad, and then share the video. Um, it's a very common step to make analyzing that data easier, to actually aggregate across all those different events and generate a single line that summarizes that user's engagement with that particular video. So we've gone through our event stream. We've grouped events by who performed them, by who the user was. Um, we've grouped micro events into macro events. And now often the next step is to take sequences of events and divide them into sessions. Again, like user identity stitching, sessionization uh, is something that varies widely between different uh, users. What we find when we give our users this very, very granular data is that they discover that their users are interacting with their, with their websites and ways, and their websites and mobile apps in ways that aren't the ways that they were expecting. Um, and typically, they want to come up with definitions of sessions that match uh, the actual behavioral patterns of their users rather than just the ones that have sort of been kicking around the digital analytics industry for the last 20 years. Um, the next step is one of the most important steps. We've got our event stream. We've aggregated it up into, into all kinds of interesting entities to make analysis easier. Now we want to join our event stream with any other data sets. And there's an enormous number of data sets that we typically want to join it with. We want to join our event data with data from our CMS. And again, what type of data is in the CMS will vary by um, industry. So if you're a newspaper publisher, you want to pull in metadata about the articles that people are viewing, the writers that wrote those articles, the date those articles were published. If you're a retailer, you want to pull in all your product catalog information so you can start slicing and dicing the way that users are engaging with your individual products on your website or app with the type of product, the type of brand, the type of category. Um, similarly for videos, uh, video media sites. Similarly for online games companies. Um, what we're really doing in this, in this step is taking the entities that matter to the business and mapping them to the kind of underlying events um, that, that in many cases are kind of technical, events like page views or screen views or Ajax events. Um, and so in this mapping exercise, what we're doing is we're taking kind of those abstract technical events and turning them into events that mean things to, to, to people who understand the business and understand the entities involved in the business. It's not just CMS data that th these joins are made with. We're typically also joining the data with marketing data um, uh, from all the different marketing sources. And I've already mentioned kind of CRM. So this data joining exercise is absolutely essential. And in the last step of that data modeling exercise, we're defining the dimensions and measures um, in a consistent way um, so that everybody who's performing analysis on the data across the business is working from the same set of dimensions. And what we find is that the actual dimensions and measures that people end up creating reports with don't look very similar to the ones that people in digital analytics typically work with. 
People in digital analytics typically work with the idea of unique browsers or um, sessions or page views. And actually, once you've gone through this kind of event modeling exercise, once you've performed all these joins, you can start, start uh, creating reports out of things that really mean much more. Who your users are, what your products are, um, what your categories are, what your behavioral segments are, what your demographic segments are. You can count users in consistent ways that match the way, uh, the way that your business actually identifies users. Measure engagement levels based on the way that users actually engage with your website or mobile app. Um, measure the current lifetime value or the forecast um, lifetime value of different users. Um, so it really is a, a kind of step change in the way that people do digital analytics. So to bring this talk to a close, I'd like to step back from those individual stages in the event data modeling process and think about what it is that makes LookML such a good um, framework for performing them. When we're doing this data model modeling exercise, what we're actually doing is we're applying business logic to our underlying data. So with Snowplow, what we try to do is create a framework that means you can, uh, you can store a very, very accurate but very unopinionated view of what has happened to your business um, in the last day or week or month or year. And then with LookML, what we're doing is we're taking business logic about how the business runs and how we understand the business and applying that to that unopinionated but very accurate data set. Um, what's interesting is that the way that business logic, um, that business logic itself evolves over time. It evolves as you understand your users better. It evolves as you understand your competitive environment better. And by, having, by applying that business logic at the end of the data pipeline, this type of setup, this kind of technical architecture, gives you the flexibility to evolve um, that business logic as your business evolves. And when you're doing that, you're recomputing on your entire data set so that your reports and all the insight that's generated keeps up with the way, uh, the way you view your business and the way that changes over time. So this is really, really significant. And it's a total step change from the way all other analytics um, providers work in digital. Um, I'm interested in, in sort of other people's views, and would love to sort of talk about this more afterwards, but LookML is bluntly just the best framework we found to manage this data modeling process. So hopefully in this talk, I've given you some idea quite how much value happens in this step and how Looker supports um, that process and therefore why we're so keen on it. Thank you.